I'm going to ask you a question. It's not a rhetorical one. Would it be okay with you if life got easier? <laughs> well, listen, don't, don't, don't answer yes too quickly because we are so used to having things being complicated in our lives, aren't we? I mean, I know I am. I, I'm a psychologist, and uh, there was a time in which I was being trained to be a psychoanalyst. And in order to be a psychoanalyst, you have to have your own analysis. And I was uh, in an analysis for 10 years. I'll say that again. 10 years. Not only that, three times a week for 10 years. Keep breathing, keep breathing. Um, on my back, staring up at the acoustic tiles in the ceiling, because I was free associating for 10 years. Now, to be fair, the first two years were pretty good because I learned a lot about myself and um, handled some issues. But, you know, the last eight years, <laughs> three times a week, how many times a week? Three. Okay, just want to make sure you're listening. I, I just had to ask myself, am I missing something? Am I missing something? Because I kept having the same things over and over again in my mind, and it, and it really came to a, a head on my 40th birthday with my birthday cappuccino. I started asking myself, what do I want to be known for? I know I talk about my, my issues and my dilemmas, but what do I really want on my tombstone? Do I want it to read, Here lies Maria, she had issues. <laughs> and no, I didn't want that. I didn't want to be known by the issues and dilemmas I had. Now, before I go into the rest of that story, I want to talk with you a little bit about something called a salience function in our brain. Uh, perceptual psychology has, has known about this for years and years. It's a part of your brain that when you focus on something, your brain gives you evidence and reasons for why it's important to focus on it. And I saw that my brain had been focusing on the same sorts of things, and I didn't want that anymore, so I turned my attention to what do people I admire focus on? What are they talking about? The Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, Eleanor Roosevelt, whoever it was, what were they talking about? They certainly weren't talking about their issues. They were interested in making a contribution. And I said, you know, that's what I want. What I really want on my tombstone is, here lies Maria. She loved us, we loved her, and life was, was better because she was in it. And I say, that's what all of you want, isn't it? I mean, listen, isn't it? I say that's what everybody wants. Now, do you ever get tired of what you're thinking? Do you ever get bored with your thoughts? Come on, tell the truth. Yeah, really, come on. I, I have a girlfriend who said, Maria, I am so bored with what I'm thinking. If I have to say the same thought again, I don't know what I'm going to do. And of course, that was another thought that she kept thinking over <laughs> and over again. But getting back to the salience function of our brain, I started thinking, what if I focused on the contributions I want to make. You know, because, let's face it, when we talk about the contributions we want to make, we settle into a different space, and that could be called the ontological space, ontology being one of the aspects of metaphysics that concerns itself with being. 
not thoughts and feelings. Now, don't get me wrong. Thoughts and feelings are important sometimes, but have you ever noticed in your own mind that your brain is, sometimes it's happy, sometimes you're sad, sometimes you're nervous, sometimes you're excited. You can be all that within three minutes, yes? I mean, really, if you look at it, your thoughts and feelings come and go. But there is something inside of you, which is who you are. That's a constant. Who you are ontologically, not who you are psychologically. You see, you and I, we have the power to shift our focus from one lens to the other. I'm going to give you some differences between, for example, psychological questions and ontological questions. A psychological question might be, what do I need to fix about myself? What do I need to develop? Now, I know none of you have ever had that thought. <laughs> Just take notes for your cousin. <laughs> but you see, the other part is, it, what, what am I willing to contribute? Instead of saying, where have I stopped myself and why have I done this, what are my lessons and how will learning them help me grow in my ability, my ability to contribute to others? Instead of, why is this happening? Why to me? Why now? What if we asked, how can I use this experience to make a difference, even what I'm going through? Now, are you interested in learning how to shift your focus from your psychological to your ontological lens? Are you interested? May I hear a yes? Okay, I was just, you know, making sure you're still awake. This is how you do it. So, right now, think of one person who you admire, right now. Could be Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, someone. Good. Now, think of three things that you admire about them. Are they generous, compassionate, brilliant, inspiring? What are they? What are those qualities? You have them down now? Because here's the secret. Those qualities are you. This is you. This is who you are. You see, I didn't tell you who to name, did I? Where did it come from? It came from you. I didn't tell you exactly what to say, what, to, what the quality, did I? I mean, if I tell you I love blue, it must be because I know about blue. You know, similarly, if I say, I love someone who's compassionate, I have to know what compassion is. It resides inside of me. And so it does for you. And you see, there's something about looking at who do I admire and what qualities do I admire in them, and being willing to see that these are qualities that are inside of me can make a difference in, in the most interesting moments. For example, about 10 years ago, I was being treated for breast cancer, and I had very, very rigorous chemotherapy, eight sessions. And around the seventh session, the uh, nurse that I was, who was putting the needle in my arm, he got very nervous. He couldn't find a vein. Now, I know that many of you have had that experience. It is really terrible. And I, I, was, I was kind of freaking out myself, you know? Except I said at one moment, I said, wait, wait. I love people who are compassionate. What is one thing I can say to this person? Literally. And I said to him, I know you want to take care of me. I trust you absolutely. And he, he kind of, sat up. And in that moment, I felt great because I could shift the focus of my attention from my discomfort 
to a contribution. And he ended up putting the needle in my arm within 30, to, 30 seconds to a minute. You know, we have an incredible life and such a privilege to shift the focus of our attention to who we are ontologically. I mean, what is it that you want to be known for? You know we can be known for our drama or our dreams. You know, our conflicts or our contribution. Our rationalizations or our results. Pick one. George Bernard Shaw had a very strong opinion about this. He said, this is the true joy in life, being used by a purpose, being considered by yourself to be a mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. What if we saw that each time we shifted to who we are and made a contribution, we actually created a sweet moment, a luminous moment that we could look back on, you know, as though our, 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 we, our life was a path and there were these beautiful golden candles, lanterns, and they, they shed a golden glow on our path, a number of them, and each one was a moment where we shifted from who we are psychologically to who we are ontologically. And when you look back, you see it was a fine path. So, every time you are tempted to think about whether or not to fix yourself, here's a three-step formula. Number one, think of someone you admire in that moment, number two, think of one or two qualities that they, that they contribute. Number three, contribute it in the moment. It can be in a coffee house, in line. It can be with your family or, or with a sick friend. Because you see, paradoxically, when you shift away from your worries and doubts to those sweet qualities that you have to contribute to life, you will see you do not have to work hard on yourself. And that is how life gets easier. Thank you.